What's up everyone, Tony here, and today we're going to be making a Raspberry Pi 2 FM radio transmitter. So let's get started. Let's start off with the parts you're going to need to build this. We're going to need, of course, a Raspberry Pi 2, and I'm just going to be using my trusty one here. Next up, you're going to need a mouse. I'm just I'm going to be using this game mouse, as well as a keyboard. Next up, you're going to need some sort of internet connection. So for me, I'm just going to be using this Tenda wireless stick again, the same one I used last time around. You're also going to need a display. So I am going to be using my trusted display here, um, along with a VGA to HDMI adapter, so I can actually cut up. This is not necessary if you're going to be using an HDMI display or SSH. You're also going to need a way of powering the Pi, and I'm just going to be using this uh, Android phone charger cable. And finally, you're going to need an antenna. So for that, I'm just going to be using this jumper wire, actually three of them that I have connected together. Each of these is male to female, although any wire that can plug into the Raspberry Pi GPIO will do just fine. Start off by plugging everything into the Y on the Raspberry Pi, except for the antenna, which I will show how to plug it in in a moment. And then next, just start up the Raspberry Pi as you normally do by plugging it in. Set your display to the right input so you can actually get a video feed. You'll know when it's starting when you get this uh, the RGB colors. And here we go, it is starting up. So once you have successfully booted up the Pi, it's going to ask you to log in. And if you haven't reconfigured it yet, the default username and password will just be the regular um, Pi as the username and Raspberry as the password. So go ahead and log in. Once you have logged in, you'll be spitted at the command prompt. And for this to sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using the visual interface because it makes managing everything a lot easier. So you can then press Start X to boot up into the visual interface. So first off, what you're going to want to do is you want, you're going to want to make sure that your Raspberry Pi is connected to internet. So if you're using this version of Raspberry, you can just go to Preferences and then Wi-Fi Configuration. And then just hit Connect. You should already be connected. And, and if you're using the newer version of Raspberry, um, you should just get the Wi-Fi icon and you can press it to connect to a network. It's really, um, The new one's really similar to the way Ubuntu handles it. And we're just going to want to go to GitHub. Actually, we don't need Google for it. We can just go to GitHub. GitHub.com. And I'll link the Raspberry Pi that we're going to be using down in the description. The one we're going to be using is called Pi FM Transmitter. I'll link this in the description, as I said numerous times. Um, so the reason we're going to be using this one instead of the one, the Pi FM, is because the Pi FM only works with the Raspberry Pi 1 and Raspberry Pi 0, um, not the Raspberry Pi 2. And this one does does lower sound quality just a bit, but it'll work with all the models of the current Raspberry Pi. So you just want to hit download zip and it will slowly download. Once it has downloaded, you should have a file manager open up. And all you want to do is you should just open the archive tree. Um, then select everything, hit extract, set it to extract to a location that you can tell such as Pi, just create a new folder for named FM transmitter, 
preferably without spaces so that you don't have to use quotation marks later. So I'm just going to make a folder called FM Transmitter, press open, and extract the archive. Now that the archive is extracted, we can actually just open our search directory up and we should uh, see a folder called FM Transmitter with the folder FM Transmitter Master. For the sake of making this easy, sim simpler for us down the line, I'm just going to cut everything from here and just put it into the FM Transmitter folder so that we don't have to go change directories every time and so we don't have to type out the long name. You can now delete the other folder. So next up, as mentioned, you're going to want to make sure you have the you have GCC G++, which is the compiler used for compiling. So you can just open up a terminal. You may or may not make it full screen here, like it. I'll keep it minimized. And you're going to just want to paste and run it. So sudo apt-get install make gcc g++. So that's going to install make, which is the compiler. And then you can just um, change your directory. So you can just type cd. Or before that, just do a dir, so you can tell what directories you have. And then cd fm transmitter. This is case sensitive, so make sure you're aware of that. Once you have then successfully done the step, you can now do make, run the make command inside this folder and it'll tell you that it is um, now compiling the program. This can take up to 30 seconds or a bit longer depending on Master Pi is. And here we go, it has compiled. So now if we look back at the folder, we should see the icon for um, the FM transmitter, which is now a program. So we can actually treat it like one now. So make sure you still stay in this directory so that we, because this is where we have the program installed now. And we can now run it. So running the FM trans Pi FM transmitter is very similar to running the regular one. So you can just go to to, to Pi FM. So dot slash for the pro to run the program. And you can just select FM. Actually, it should get it. Oh, no. And then if you just press tab, it should tell you the options. So we can go dot slash and then FM underscore transmitter. And then from here, you can just type the name of the song. By default, this does come with the Star Wars at WAV file so that you can actually test it out. So let's use that. Star underscore wars dot WAV. And then you can select the frequency. Now, um, FM transmitter can actually broadcast from 1 MHz to 250. But if you want to actually hear it over FM and not some police radio channel, make sure it's between 87.5 and 100, 108. So here I found that 90. Oh, no. Make sure your num lock is on. I'm just going to go to 95.6 because it's an empty, because there's just a bunch of static there. I don't hit enter yet because we have one last step. Your last step is to take the antenna that you made. So in my case, I'm just going to be using this jumper wire and we're going to plug the female into GPIO pin 4. Um, I can, I'll can overlay the, the pin out for you guys, but pin 4 normally goes like this. So this is pin 1, 2, and then your last two pins. So gee, this is technically pin number 7, so we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's the fourth pin down. And we now have our antenna. The longer the better, I found that at least you need to have at least 10 centimeters of wire so you can actually hear it properly. Now just leave this antenna hanging. And if you want to put on your case, you can just run this through the ribbon cable header, which is normally used for the Pi display. Just run the cable. Put that unplugging. And you can put your case back on to the Raspberry Pi. Next up, you're going to want to move over to your FM radio. Hit your power button, set it to the channel that you're broadcasting on, so for us it's going to be 95.6. Make sure you have the volume set to a reasonable level, it's do it doesn't broadcast too loudly. And then now, you can hit enter from your computer. Now, if you configured this whole thing correctly, you should hear your Star Wars test tune playing on your selected frequency. Due to copyright reasons, I can't play that track out loud, but trust me, it works. Now, this works nicely if you have all your songs converted 
to the WAV format at two, um, 22 hertz as the rate, which is actually very low in terms of sound quality, and it's going to be a pain for it to convert every single one of your songs. So there's a much more convenient way to actually get this FM transmitter to work. Now, if you want to take this to the next level, you can actually use a attack or ADC similar to this one, the Sleberhinger UCA 200, and this just allows you to input RCA and output RCA and converts it to USB because the Raspberry Pi does not have a native microphone header. We can use this to input music data and get our FM transmitter to broadcast from this microphone input. So let's configure that. So depending on the model you're using, once you plug it into Raspberry Pi, your green LED should be on and now we can configure it from the software. So once you have plugged your analog to digital converter audio input in, you're going to want to configure it. So to do that, just go to sudo also mixer and you'll come to this channel right here. So right now we can see that we're on BCM 28 V5 also with the Broadcom mixer chip. Now this is actually the one that's built into the Raspberry Pi and it's not the one we want to use. Um, also on the screen you should see an audio level bar and this is what sets all your volumes. Let's get that nice little frame. So we can press F6 which is going to ask us to select our sound card and we want to just pick USB audio codec because that is the one we are using and not the one that's built into Raspberry Pi. So you can just hit enter and now you'll be prompted at this screen or you can also still configure the volume. Zoom out a little bit. Oh my camera's moving around. And here um, normally your volume will, might be quite low. So you're just going to want to set that to almost maximum. So in this case, we'll go 96, which will set it at a decibel gain of negative zero. And now you can just press escape to exit. Let's move our text back up to the top. So this is where we can actually start to do a co some cool stuff. All right, so we want to make sure we're back into the FM transmitter folder. And then from here, we actually want to run a command such as so a record which is to record audio dash d hardware equals one comma zero because remember on um, how in the also mixer we saw that our codec was audio device number one dash c1 dash d zero dash r twenty two zero fifty um so that's the bit rate we're running at so twenty two 50, 22,050 hertz, which is quite low considering normally at home you'd be running at around 44,100 or if you're in a studio 48. So, um, but then you go dash F S16 underscore LE which sets up the 16 bit audio and then you can just do a pipe. Um, you'll have to set your keyboard to US to use the pipe button otherwise you might have to configure your keyboard and that'll tell you to stream this audio to this source. So we just want to go dot slash FM transmitter dash our frequency. So in this case, I'm actually going to switch this to 93.0 because it works way better. And the closest channels are 500 megahertz to either direction. So it makes sure we're not going to interfere with anything. Next up, you're going to want to make an input to your DAX. I'm just going to be using this DVD player. We're going to be picking up the white and the red if you're in the if you're in North America. So we can just go into the input, the white and the red. And we can now plug our input into like um, the headphone jack of our desktop. You're going to want to set the volume quite high because the input volume is somewhat low. So you're now going to want to put on your favorite music on your desktop or what or your iPod or whatever you plug the other end of your cable into. In this case, I'm just going to be putting on Fade by Alan Walker, um, no copyright sound, so that I don't get copyright striped. Uh -huh. Which is why you guys didn't can't hear the Star Wars one, but that did work. So now that this is playing, we can go and hit Enter on our Raspberry Pi. And my camera hates to focus on me sometimes. So press enter. 
and it should tell you play, um, recording SME then and signed 16 bit and then playing 22050 hertz 16 bit mono to the FM track. Alright, so now we can also power up our tuner, set it to the right frequency. And as you can see, or most likely here, our FM transmitter is working, broadcasting our music that was that's playing from our desktop, inputting to the Raspberry Pi, which is then transmitting over the FM frequency. And we can actually prove that this works by hopping on over here and pausing and playing. There is about a one second delay. Um, but I feel like that's going to happen because it's technically play back, playing as it's recording into the FM transmitter. And as you can hear, the sound quality is honestly very low um, because of the 22050 um, hertz rate. But hey, it's something you built at home. If, and if you had a Raspberry Pi, it probably cost you next to nothing. So... If you're not hearing much, um, or if you're hearing it like stuttering, make sure that your um, computer or your phone volume is on maximum because it actually accepts the inputs really quietly. Like, no, no, I think that's my radio glitching. That's what I mean. You'll actually have to have the volumes quite high. You'll have to have all the system volumes from everything turned up quite high to be able to hear it due to the nature of this. Also, other than the sound quality, make uh, make sure the files on your computer, you actually have, have it set to the right input if you're not hearing anything. And make sure if you're playing like off Windows Media Player that the Windows Media Player volume is high as well. And... There you go. Now I found that after a few, after about 15 minutes, the stuff start to chop every once again. Like it starts stuttering ever so slightly. But then if you just stop the transmission and then restart it, the problem goes away. So there you go. So there you go. When you have now built your own FM transmitter using a Raspberry Pi 2 that you maybe had that you were using for other projects. But now, when you're going somewhere along with your buddies, you can also use it as an FM transmitter. So I thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.